Okay, so I tricked you guys. Yes, I am a California girl. Yes, this is Chicago, but I'm actually not going to tell you a story about a California girl <laughs> living in Chicago because this is a story about a vacation. <laughs> All right? So this is a story in which I remembered who I am. Now, it takes place on a family vacation to the East Coast about two summers ago. And family vacations are a really good way to get to know each member of the family, right? Because everyone has their own agenda, right? My father, on family vacations, wants to spend his time reading and lounging by the pool. My mother wants to spend her time visiting family. I want to go and be active and like see all the sights and do all the like running around stuff. My sister wants to text her boyfriend because that's what she does all the time. And my brother wants to swim. Always, wherever we are, where's the pool? So we got into Massachusetts at, I don't know, 117. He was, you know, ready in his bathing suit and goggles at like 122, ready to go. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided to go down with him. Naila came too, had my book, had my sunglasses. I was on vacation. He had his bathing suit, his goggles. He was on vacation. Naila had her phone. She was on vacation. We were all good. We're going down to the pool. We're going to the elevator. We open the elevator. We get in the elevator. Fourth floor, go into the pool. Third floor, go into the pool. <laughs> Second floor. <laughs> Second floor. <laughs> no longer going to the pool because we were still on the second floor and the elevator was not moving. Okay, all right, that's, that's fine. We'll just you know, press the lobby button again. Still not moving. Oh, okay, okay, we'll just open the doors, you know, take the stairs, whatever. Open doors, nothing happens. Open door. No, nope, still, still nothing. <laughs> Naila goes, <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if we were stuck in this elevator? <laughs> oh, of course. We're not stuck in the elevator. <laughs> we're not. We're totally stuck in this elevator. So, we're stuck in the elevator. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We can handle this. That's what the emergency phone button on the <laughs> elevator is for, right? Press the emergency phone button. We're fine. We're fine. It rings. Didn't know it. Elevator phones actually rang. I thought it would just connect, but it's ringing. <laughs> ringing. Ringing. Goes to voicemail. <laughs> Why on earth would you have a phone go to voicemail on an elevator? Who's leaving messages in an elevator? I don't know. But okay, that's fine. Emergency button didn't work. We'll just call our parents. They'll have the hotel manager come. Call my parents. Yeah, we're stuck in this elevator. Come get us. Okay waiting for the hotel manager. Meanwhile, Naila has taken out her phone and has posted on Facebook, we're stuck in the elevator, so cool! <laughs> and she's taking out her camera, she's taking pictures, photo shoot in the elevator. Omar's been a little quiet, you know, not sure what to make of the situation. And after hearing me say stuck in the elevator, he, he starts getting a little jittery. We're stuck? We're stuck? What's gonna happen to us? What's, what's gonna happen? Oh my God, you guys, Naila said. What if all of a sudden the elevator just falls and we just crash to the floor and break into a million pieces? <laughs> Omar says, what, what? I don't want the elevator to fall. Oh my God, you guys, what if, what if we're stuck in here for like five days and we have to like eat each other? <laughs> I don't wanna eat each other, what? I don't, like we're stuck in the F, what? Oh my God, you guys, what if everyone starts farting and we smell the gas and we die from the poison from the gas in our farts? Oh my God, you guys, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I'm too young to die. I'm too young. My brother's 11. I'm too young to die. I don't want to die. We hear my father's voice on the other end. You guys, so the hotel manager, he says that he doesn't have an elevator key, but they're sending the fire department, so it'll be another 20 minutes. I'm gonna die. fire department came, he didn't die, but the fire department said, stand back, we're prying open the door, so I gathered my siblings beside me, they pried open the door, and my mother found us, huddled, the back of the elevator, 
her three little children, and she said, Oh, my babies. <laughs> and yes, that's exactly what we were in that moment. We were her babies. And I remember that. I cherished that little moment. Yes, I was glad to be out of the elevator, but I was also glad to feel like someone's baby. Now flash forward to the next day. It was a summer evening, and uh, we were hungry. And my cousin called and said, we got some patties at our house. Now, if you're Haitian and someone says, we got some patties, you best be going to that house because it's going to be a slamming meal because patties are delicious. So I'm like, OK, we're going to your house and we've got patties. So we go to the house, but we need to pick up some toiletries, so we stop at CVS. Now, I don't know if it was just the intense need for these delicious patties or if it was, I don't know, being in this enclosed space with my family for a long time and just being a little kooky, but I just had a crazy moment where this little golem voice came into my ear and said, Johanna, see that chapstick right there? What if you just took it and <laughs> left the store? And I thought, why, yes. <laughs> what if I did that? <laughs> so I did it. I took it, and I left the store. And as soon as the cool night air hit my skin, I felt just this wave of regret and shame and confusion. What did I just stole from CVS? Who am I? And I get in the car, and I get behind the passenger, uh, behind the steering wheel, and I pause. I go, guys, I, I got some chapstick. My <laughs> mom and sister are like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I took the chapstick. I didn't pay for the chapstick. I, I just stole some chapstick, and it was silent. My mother said, why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I guess, you know, it's one of those things that you always wonder if you can do, and then you just sort of did it, and I, I, you know, I just did it. I don't, I don't really know why. I just, she was silent, and I drove. We got our patties, and we came home, and she still hadn't said anything. So and we went back inside. I, I said, are, are you mad at me? She said, I'm not mad. I just don't know who you are. And that was worse to hear than, our, than being mad, right? And for the rest of the trip in Boston, she didn't speak to me. So, okay, flash forward to New York, <laughs> the part two of the trip. It was Saturday morning. I was eating cookies, as I do on Saturday mornings. And um, at this time, I was, we were preparing to go um, to New Jersey to visit some family friends. And so I was getting my laptop and also eating my cookies, eating my cookies, pick up my laptop, and the laptop falls. And it's silent in the room. Because I have a history with laptops, a very sad history with laptops. Now, this, this very laptop, just a year before, I had let fall in a rehearsal, and uh, the screen was broken and just never got fixed. And then I was uh, I was in my apartment one day and really wanted my laptop to work, and so I was like, Jesus, let my laptop work. And I got this idea. Well, maybe if you like drop it from the same place that it fell when you were in rehearsal then maybe it will work again because that's what happens when your iPod's broken. You just like hit it and it works again, right? And so I did that. Well, I tried. I just, I got like really close to the floor with my laptop and just sort of let it bounce down and then turned it on and nothing happened. And I was like, okay, exactly the same place. Let it fall, picked it up, turned it on. And it worked. It worked. Jesus healed my laptop. It was amazing. <laughs> so um, I had a healed laptop, and now it was broken again. So 
I was going for the second miracle, so I picked it up. I said, okay, I'm going to drop it from the exact same place on my cookie. I'm going to put the cookie same place right here and let it drop. And tap. Uh, It was completely dead. So, no, Jesus doesn't perform the same miracles twice. Um, and my dad, upon seeing that my laptop was broken once again, said, I can't believe you let your laptop break once again. I just, I'm, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. And he left the room, went outside to go start packing up the car. Just the tears started coming up. And I was just like, okay, my dad won't talk to me either. And I felt a hand on my shoulder. And my mom said, it's going to be okay. He'll come around. And I looked at her and I said, oh, you're talking to me now? And she was like, Johanna, it's okay. It's okay. Come on, baby. Let's go in the car. And in that moment... I remembered that even when I do stupid things, like drop my laptop one time, drop it a second time, um, because I'm eating a cookie, um, whatever it is, that in the end, I will still be forgiven for those stupid things. Because in the end, I am her baby, and she loves me. So that is the story of how I remembered who I was and still am. Thank you.